her smoking My best friend's homegrown weed I remember drinking 100 proof misery Now I'm older Ain't quite what I used to be When people ask me Are you afraid to die alone? Well, I say you won't I died a long time ago Well, I say you won't I died a long time ago Well, I've been Willie Playing on my car radio Messing me around And that's working nicely Well, I love the ladies And I love that old country guitar sound I like singing A good old Hank Williams tune <laughs> When people ask me Are you afraid to die it once, and I'll say it again, y'all. I say you all I died a long time ago. Well, I say you all I died a long time ago. Oh, don't you know? Let's go home, boy.
Okay, right, what's up? <laughs> Welcome back. Now that was a hell of an intro. The idea of it really was that I had to make a tool, which I'll come to in a minute, and I had to prepare some bits of metal and stuff for this simple skills. Now, for those of you who just joined the channel, there are many people who joined the channel in the new year, just found us for the first time. Just explain what simple skills stuff is. What we do if we can is try and make Simple, straightforward, basic stuff that those of you who've never done anything for garage, never done anything with tools, never fixed your bike, never made, built or fabricated anything, can have a little go. You can learn this basic stuff that really ain't hard. 90% of people watching have probably seen this sort of thing time and time again, but it's still, hopefully, it's entertaining and interesting and you might find it that you didn't know it. Um, we've done lots of stuff. In the last one we did on Simple Skills was oil burning a bolt head, so massive feedback on that. Loads of people remember it from 30 years ago, which is when I learned it, and loads of people never heard of it. So that's the sort of idea. Simple Skills, we've been asked for more, haven't we? We've had loads yep, of Yep, we know. have. Welcome back. <laughs> I'm here. We've had loads of people asking for more Simple Skills because you can learn from it, and I think that's what it's about. Anyway, right today, I want to try and rivets. Now, when you go to a rivet shop or a bolt shop or a fastener shop or any auto accessory type place and you ask for a rivet, what you get is one of them. A simple pop rivet, aluminium tube. Now, they can be steel, but normally that is an aluminium tube. I'll just give you a quite close up of the anatomy of it. Um, it's an aluminium tube, that's that section there, with a flange on the end, like that, which, hang on, I can't really show it. Here we are, you get a little flange on the end that stops it going all the way through and there's a piece of wire that runs right through the middle and a bobble on the end and all you do is put that in the hole, like that, and then a machine, a little tool, pulls this wire through which thickens up or it pulls this bobble through the aluminium tube and makes it expand and then that wedges it in the job and when it gets to a certain pressure the little bobble pops off the end thence it's called a pop rivet and the piece of wire comes out and disappears and then you've got a nice security. I'll show you how they actually work. To show you one in action, so you can see what they do. I'm, you've all seen these, haven't you? Show you what I mean. Right, so we'll pop a piece of sheet metal in the vise just to represent, say, I don't know, the mud guard of your bike, and you want to connect uh, anything. So you've got a little thing there, you want to connect that piece of metal to that piece of metal. So you just need two holes lining up, and we push the rivet through. Simple as that. That's the rivet in place. Now this might be inside a metal tube, it might be inside a box section, it might be wherever. That's the idea of these. You can, you can access and fit them from the outside. And all you do is you can use these simple set of pliers. You push that on the end and then, actually I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll do, the, do it with the, with the big pliers. Push the applicator tool on the end when you bring it in as you can see it yanks that little piece of wire goes forward it pulls that piece of wire all the way through deforming the rivet on the back fattening it up and then it snaps off or pops and then you get the little piece of wire in the tool there so just showing you another one that's the result there. This back section has got the little bobble, the ball. That ball that's on the end is now broken off and wedged in there. And that has squeezed that together and it's wedged that piece of metal firmly against that one. And that will not come off. Simple as that. Right, so you can see how the principle of a standard pop rivet works. If you ask for rivets these days, that's what you get, you get given these. Now that's that piece of tubing on these ones is aluminium. It can also be mild steel or stainless steel. You can even buy plastic ones. Now, it doesn't matter where you look, you'll find rivets everywhere, you know, hidden in plain sight. Uh, Aeroplanes are riveted together. Steam trains, boilers, ships, many things were riveted together long before there was welding. But this principle of using this ply that <laughs> They're still quite um, they're, they're still quite dead, quite fresh. <laughs> Not quite dead yet. That the principle of putting that in a machine or in a little plier like that, and then pulling that wire through by squeezing it or using big heavy duty ones like that, that is the current way to do it. But that is not how rivets used to work. These are a recent invention. These have come around lately. Since 
time began, men have used rivets to rivet things together. I mean, go back, how far are we going to get? Steam engines, Stevenson's rocket, mm -hmm. everything. Bridges, the fourth bridge, look at everything. They were riveted together, but the rivets they used were nothing like these. They were more like that. That is a solid mild steel rivet. That's what they used to look like. It's nothing mechanical about it. It's got no moving parts. It's just a little piece of steel, nothing more. Effectively, a straight nail. It's got a round head, they come with a flat head, countersunk head, there's a variation of different ones, but that's what a rivet used to be. And I wanted to show you as a simple skills. I know, <clears throat> I don't think this is teaching you anything. I don't mean I'm trying to impart in anything you're gonna use here, because I'm probably never gonna use this. But if you look in the brake shoes in your car, if you've got a car with brake shoes or a truck, they still rivet the material, the soft material of the brake shoes onto the metal backing. They still use rivets today. Rivets will always be around. And I don't mean these little daft pot rivets. They use proper pin rivets, which are squashed. So I'm going to show you how to fit one of these into a piece of metal and see how secure and smart looking they are when they're done. Uh, first thing is you need a tool. Now this particular bolt, that's where this comes in. You saw at the beginning of the video, I took this bolt and I just drilled a countersink in the head of it there it is come on there now i just drilled a, a dent in the end of it and what that's for is to hold the head like that for that to fit into and that stops it deforming and you'll see how it's used in the set you can purchase that that's normally called uh, a rivet snap and set tool so you set it like that you set them in position it, i'm not going to bore you with the metal work of it i'm not going to go into it that much i just want to show you physically how it works you normally buy that, it looks like a little punch. What it will look like is one of them. So you just get one of those and it's cut off perhaps about there and it's got that ending like a little concave head and that's the tool. Now I could buy that, but I'm never gonna use it. And you could make them out of bolt, simple as that. So I'm gonna pop it in the vise with its base down against the body of the vise and then do it up. So what it forms is perfect it'll really wind it up nice and tight that forms a really solid little cap that the rivet itself can sit in like that simple now when I then beat against the top of this I'm gonna do a sec that won't deform it will stay in that nice round shape you can get ones with flat heads you can get them with pointed heads for decoration you can get ones that are countersunk so they look like a V and they go into a countersunk hole but this particular one is a round button head like that and then we're going to take two bits of metal. So what I've done with this, I've got a straightforward piece. So let's imagine that's one half of your boiler. And I've got this other piece here and I've countersunk that. The idea of countersinking that, if I put that on there, and you then put this other piece on top. So you can see if you come in the top there, the purpose of countersinking that is that when I beat this over with the hammer, this little countersunk area around the side it's going to accept the metal the metal is going to spread into it if i left it flush you can do it like that but then you have to make this into a little rounded button pretty much like that and normally you wouldn't do that you make a countersink then you can beat it flat make a nice job so first of all is to heat it up cools it will contract and pull it a lot closer so that will give you an idea just beating that over and filling up the countersink with all the metal and then you can grind that flush completely and polish it over proper proper rivets now the the top end the button head where are we right that's just deformed very slightly uh, because what I've used in doing this 
was a self-made tool. I just used this, this bolt countersunk. But if you use a proper set, a proper set and snap, you'll have the correct head size exactly, and it won't deform that head at all. Uh, if you're going to use brass or alloy or bronze or copper rivets, you don't need to heat them at all. You only need to heat steel rivets because obviously they need that little bit of persuasion. And as I said, when that cools down, it will contract even more and tighten that joint right up. What I wanted to show you was that's how originally metal was riveted together. And it would be everything, like you say, from the fourth bridge to aircraft to boilers to trains, all sorts of things were riveted together long before welding. And the reason trains and boilers and aircraft are riveted together, certainly aircraft to this day, is that they can expand and contract. If you've got, say, a long joint, two pieces of metal come together, overlap each other, great big long joint. If you weld that joint, it becomes one piece of metal and then as it expands and contracts, it can buckle and contort and twist. But if it's a riveted joint, it can expand and contract and move. It gives it room for manoeuvre and that's important on things that get extremely hot, extremely cold, like aircraft. I had the good fortune once to go to Duxford Aerodrome or Duxford Airfield and I saw the Lockheed Lightning Blackbird spy plane it's there they've got one there it's this big matte black frightening looking thing if you go up really close it's all riveted together they're tiny little two millimeter titanium rivets and they're three millimeters apart but there's this perfect little line of rivets that hold the wings together the fuselage the whole lot and how advanced is a plane like that all aircraft if they are made from sheets of metal they're riveted together so that goes back long before it's a blacksmith trick to be honest blacksmiths do that all the time standard pinging over metal rivets using a ball peen hammer so you've got the back, the round end or the back to mushroom it and the flat end to flatten it out what do you reckon cool riveting stuff shows what to do it shows what to do you may not use this this simple skills may just be more for entertainment than anything else but hopefully it's something that you might consider in the future certainly in these times of you know, like steampunk and, and the, the sort of hipster movement where they're designing bikes people are making old school stuff now because old school is cool it always has been so if you're going to make something a little bit old school and you want to put brass rivets in it you can go and buy them and that's how you fit them and odd is it easy anything else pen that's it thank okay, you okay here we are thanks for watching this has been a midweek one by the weekend i will have the riv nuts here and i'll show you how to fit the riv nuts in the frame and then we'll be getting on with fitting the basic mounting points and cutting the metal stock into the tabs and getting on with fabricating that tail section to join it into the bike all right that'll do it yeah? there we are we'll leave you with all the friends take it easy happy new year again quite safe see you next time Boy almost brought me to tears That's life of an 